I've seen a lot of videos and advice about rules for D&D, um, specifically what rules you should throw out or modify or homebrew rules that you should just always kind of use as a default. Um, and I think they're good things. I think they're good to kind of get you thinking about things and I've definitely used some of them, right? But I also think it's more important to know how or why a rule for D&D might be right or wrong for your own game or campaign. We may not win today, gentlemen, but we'll have a good time. <laughs> so I do think that there are wrong ways to play D&D. Um, I think those things tend to be the things outside of like the game itself on the tabletop, um, which tend to be things like respect for other players or the DM that kind of going both ways or things like trying to really give someone a hard time in the game because you don't feel like their character fits in your campaign or something um, or a DM showing favoritism to, to one player over others those kind of things those are obviously kind of wrong ways to play but I think they have more to do with like the social aspect of the players outside of the game rather than in the game the mechanics and the rules and stuff and those seem to be so obvious for me I hope they're really obvious for most people but I think those are the ones that are pretty rigid or almost immutable. But the rules ways that are right or wrong, I think really depend on your style of game or campaign or what you're kind of going for in a session or a game. Um, and I think it's worth, really worth knowing or having a way to assess whether it is right or wrong for your game. So. Um, I'm going to talk about a good methodology or process to kind of be able to make that assessment for your own games or sessions. Um, something that will kind of help hone your critical thinking skills in that area, specifically in this context. And I'm just going to give some examples. This is something that kind of needs to be generalized, like you need to have good generalized rules for how to evaluate this. But I think sometimes showing some specific examples can help you see a process or help you kind of hone a skill if you don't already kind of have it developed to a degree. So what would this process be? The first step in the process is to have a goal, state a goal for yourself, whether it's just for an encounter or just for a whole session, a game, um, or a campaign or a subset, a phase of your campaign. Whatever it is, if you're trying to figure this kind of thing out, you need to kind of have a goal. And secondly, you need to figure out what things you're going to do uh, to kind of accomplish that goal. What are the things or the decisions for your style of game that you are going to make to help bring about that goal that you want to see? But that's not enough. You need to, after you've gone through that or tried either that encounter or that session or that game you really need to stop and take a second to intentionally assess how well those components went um, or is it one or two or all of the components or, or what things did really work and what what things added or what things detracted from the game or the encounter whatever you were trying to accomplish um, and then the last thing is to just plan plan for your next one always kind of be improving and all those things kind of follow one right after the other uh, a really good goal in the beginning helps set everything up so let's look at some examples I'll kind of tell you what what I'm kind of try to explain what I'm, what I'm talking about here let's take the example of the ammunition rules uh, keeping track of your ammunition and using them when you fire a weapon a bow or a crossbow and losing or breaking them, having to buy them in town. For a lot of people, their games, a lot of people say, just throw that rule out. Don't even use it. And probably to a large degree, I would say I agree. I don't typically use them in my games. But why do I not want to use them in my games? I don't want to use them in games where it's just trivial to keep track of this kind of thing. Um, if you're frequently in villages or towns um, or you're your characters have access to enough money that it's just trivial for them to be buying these things and carrying them and keeping track and whatnot. Um, 
it's just not going to add too much to the game. But what when when would you use it, right? I totally think and I I I kind of imagine playing this kind of game someday, but if you had a group that was really into or got enjoyment out of playing a really rugged um, orienteering out in the wilderness kind of game um, survival kind of a lot of players that were interested in survival kind of stuff either survival shows or actually did it themselves um, and you're you're playing like a whole campaign that you are either tracking some other individual or group down in a forest or a jungle or you're being tracked and you need to, to flee, like make an escape. Um, and if you're in that situation and like limited resources add to the tension, they add to the difficulty of the encounters, that kind of thing. Um, having a handful of arrows and having to keep track of them is going to be a big part of that calculus for going into fights or when you're going to fight or or if you have a, a bow choosing to use it or using another weapon um, that can really add a lot and if somebody makes uh, finds the right materials or makes a survival check to be able to craft a, a few more arrows that could be huge that could be a big part of that game or campaign um, so in that kind of a setting it might add to it yes it's going to be a little bit more tracking or players are going to be having to do a little bit more with inventory and that kind of thing but it in that situation in that context it could really add to the suspense of your of your games it could add a tension that maybe wasn't there before and check to see if it works out right if you do that think about your your goals for that kind of thing would be i want to add uh, a little more challenge or pressure or tension to this game it's going to be rugged survival so I want it to be limited resources and I want there to be tension with figuring out um, when they're going to use certain supplies and that kind of thing and then just follow those steps right think about adding in that rule if there are other things you you want to add in alongside that ammunition rule right add them in uh, but then, after you do an encounter or two or a session or something, see if it played out how you were thinking it would play out. Um, and then just make your plan for the next encounter or the next game, right? If, if that ammunition rule and another one that you kind of thought of to go with it work really well together, keep going with it. But if you try a couple of things together and it seems like it all wasn't kind of working maybe try to pare it down and see if just the just the ammunition roll without any kind of extra homebrew stuff to it works next time but um that would be a way that you could kind of work your way through seeing if ammunition rolls are right for your game okay another example i have heard people leverage the criticism against crafting an inn as like a wrong thing to do for your game and so where does that come from right um I think it's certainly has its merits the idea being don't craft the inn if you're just going to have your players in there for 10 or 15 minutes just talking to people getting a quest started finding like a hook for an adventure or something like that um, and then you leave you might set up like an elaborate little scene for your all your characters to be in like that tavern setting that kind of thing and then you leave it right it could be a lot of crafting um, a lot of work just to set up a really brief encounter and that's completely valid right the thing that made me laugh one time is the criticism that I've heard leveraged against making an inn was that uh, if you're planning on being in the inn for a long enough period of time that it's worth crafting an inn you need a better imagination <laughs> to figure out quests for D&D or things for your party to do and I couldn't help but find that a little bit funny because that's just a direct counter to the argument itself. You, you can have just as much imagination inside a building or in a narrowed setting, a narrowed scope, as you can in a, in a larger scope, right? Out wherever in the world. Um, I recently was kind of working on a... Uh, maybe not like the entirety of the campaign, but certainly a big chunk of a campaign where I'd crafted up an inn, just a nice spacious inn, and it was a little bit generic, so I could use it as a different building some other time. 
but uh, the players were going to need to work their way up through like a, an America's Got Talent kind of thing <laughs> to get into performing in the, the royal court to be able to get to this elite noble that they wanted to take out, the villain. And uh, you're going to be playing, and I totally thought that made a lot of sense, right? Especially if this is going to be venue to venue where it's a big organized thing. I don't see why they wouldn't have like a standardized building that they've kind of built in different cities to kind of do this and, and whatnot. Um, and then a lot of things are going to play out there, performances, if a, a fight breaks out or if they are trying to gather information or intel on their way, trying to kind of work their way up the ladder to get to, into this royal court. Um, that makes a lot of sense, right? And I, I think it, it just kind of works in that setting. So again, I, I think it's, mm, it's, I just feel really uneasy saying that that's always going to be wrong for everyone's game. Um, it's definitely worth thinking about if you, if you were going to craft an in just for a brief, like 10 or 15 minutes kind of thing. If you love crafting, if you're really good at crafting and your players see a piece and it just immerses them in your campaign, maybe that still is kind of cool. But if you find yourself kind of crafting a big set piece and then just using it for a little bit and then having to put it away and you kind of have that like mm, sock to the gut feeling like, geez, I was working on that all weekend and then we didn't we didn't really spend much as much time there as I thought we were going to. Um, then maybe it's worth really considering when should I go theater of the mind and when should I have like a crafted kind of set piece for the tabletop. That seems totally justified for me. But so again, in this setting, um, my goal was to have a, like a narrowed focus um, to get the players involved in a little bit more um, role playing with skill checks and kind of with some NPCs that we're going to help, help them put together acts and that kind of thing. And so all those things could take place in the inn and I just tried it out. I tried out that, you know, that one thing, this mechanic of doing a skill check, um, vying skill checks to kind of beat the first person to get to five successes competing against another act gets to advance and that kind of thing. Um, and giving the players some incentives to role play to get a little more advantage on their checks and that kind of stuff. Um, and it was kind of fun. I really liked it. I think the players seemed to really like it and that's what mattered, right? Like if, if it worked for me, if I had a lot of fun preparing it and the players had a lot of fun executing it and putting themselves in that part of the world, then it's right for your game. That's, that's it. It's up to you. It's your game. So that was one example for like the ends that I think it can be worth it. It just really depends. You got to make that assessment for yourself. What about trying to put together a chariot racing encounter? Um, you know, you kind of have this idea that you want a Mad Max or a Ben-Hur kind of feeling for maybe an encounter or a series of encounters in a bunch of different games in your campaign. Um, but you kind of start to think it through and you know obviously if you just kind of ran it with each turn every chariot having their movement speed and that kind of thing um it's not really going to be a race they're all just going to move their movement speed every turn and nothing's going to really work out so you know you may kind of think about animal handling or vehicle proficiency checks to get a little more speed out of it each time that kind of thing um and you you might find that you're adding a little too much complexity to it, right? Like you want to find a balance between um, having like a good mechanic and then it not dragging on that kind of thing. So when you go to make that encounter, think about what your, your goal is first, right? If your goal is that you want like a, uh, not just to have this chariot race it's not just about winning this chariot race but you want um action you want a lot of action you want some suspense in it right are you going to have the racers be able to affect each other are you going to either be able to 
um, distract or try to harm each other? Is it that kind of race? Um, or this is a mechanic I've used sometimes for skill checks and I really like it. Um, I believe, uh, I'm not sure. I highly suspect that I've just picked this up, but I do not really recall. I think if I picked it up anywhere, it's from uh, Chris Perkins, the man, the legend. But if you have, uh, let's say you want a specific skill, right? Let's say for that you wanted animal handling to, to maneuver whatever animals driving your, your chariots. I would say I'm taking an animal handling check, but whether you're skilled in it or not, if you can tell me how you would use another skill uh, that you are proficient in, so it, it kind of goes to the background of your character or how they're developed, that kind of thing, then you can get an advantage on the animal handling check. You don't get to use the other skill that you maybe are trained or is better, but but telling me how you would use that, that second skill, they'll both work together where you get advantage on, on the animal handling check. And that can be fun because then you get the characters kind of really digging into the role playing. And that could be a blast, right? So it depends. If you wanted more action, maybe it's that there's a max speed for every chariot every turn. But the more you, uh, if you're if you're okay with like the, the chariots trying to harm each other, right? Maybe maybe every successful attack or successful distraction takes five feet off of that other chariot's movement speed. So yes, they all have a top line, but you are either trying to defend yourself to not fall behind or just really, really getting in other people's way to, to muddy them. Um, and when you do it, when you do it that way, see if it gets what you want. Like if you wanted more action and kind of combat out of it, Try that out, and if it kind of bogged down, or if it just wasn't what you were thinking, analyze it. That's part of the assessment. What were the components that you didn't like? Um, if it was just, if it felt kind of right, but it just was a little slower, are there ways that you can simplify the mechanics, or just make them go a little bit quicker? Um, if you're not really wanting that, you're just wanting um, like more suspense with it, then. The skill check road could be kind of cool. See if that, I like that because it's a pretty simple system. Um, you can get advantage on them. So it's, it's kind of easy for characters to figure out something to to get, uh, get ahead of the regular NPCs. But it, it comes at the price of like, they're gonna have to role play for it. So if you're wanting to bring that out, maybe that's more of uh, the direction that you want to go. If you want to avoid everything being combat, or if you're kind of like wanting to take a break from that, or just get a little bit of variety. Think about what the goal is, and then just follow through those steps and see if it kind of works for your game. Um, another thing too, that I've seen people like literally debate whether it's better to play a high magic game or a low magic game. And the truth is the only way to answer that question is with your group your dm and your players and preferably in a session zero that's why it's so important because if you had a dm and three players that were ready to play this high octane high magic campaign and one player who wanted a really gritty low magic campaign it's going to really not be fun for that one person but it might be good for everybody else um and it's just worth everybody being on the same page, right? Because if, if all the players are wanting a high magic campaign and the DM's wanting a low magic campaign, they're gonna feel like they're getting stiffed, <laughs> you know? Um, but if everybody's on the same page, if you go, hey guys, you know what? Let's play something kind of gritty, kind of scrappy. And um, it's, gonna, it's gonna be a little bit more slower paced. The scope is gonna be kind of narrowed in, both geographically, like in your world, and to the like epicness of your encounters and stuff. We're just gonna kind of dial it back down a bit, but just really, really sink our teeth into it. Or is it like a high magic campaign? Like I, like with my, I have a group that we consistently is like every month and a half or so that we would kind of get together and be able to play. And so when, when we have kind of a limited time, it's not like a weekly group where we can really easily kind of keep building on stuff and it's super fresh in our minds right um 
it's kind of fun to just be pedal to the metal every game and be kind of high magic or crazy stuff is just happening. Um, it's in that situation for us, we get a little bit more mileage out of the limited time that we get together. Um, there's a lot of different reasons that you might determine one way or the other for your game, but again, that's up to you. You just have to figure out what your goals are and work your way through that, that process to see if it's right for your game. For the goal, when you're coming up with the goal, I think it's okay for that part to be a little bit subjective, but the more that you can describe it, the easier everything else is going to be. Um, you know, like if you say, if your goal is, I want to have a fun campaign, that's not a bad goal, but it's going to be a, a lot easier to flesh out the next components if you describe it. What is fun going to look like? In, for your game. Um, I want to have a fun game where there's just a lot of adventure, there's a lot of exploration, there's going to be a lot of on-site kind of stuff going on. That's immediately much more helpful, right? Because then you can kind of communicate that to the players so that they know what you're doing. You can, you can kind of work out how mechanically your campaign is going to go. Is it going to be a lot of it could be a series of dungeon crawls as you kind of go exploring in a certain area. Um, that's going to be a little bit more helpful. And that's just a little bit. The more that you kind of describe that goal or really hone in on it, be it can be concise, but the more that it cuts to the matter at hand, the better the goal is going to be for helping you kind of work through the steps. Um, and then setting so so then the next thing is like objective part F figuring out what objective things you are going to do to get to your goal or your thought or feeling that you want to get out of your games right and that could be everything from from how much you get into the description of things yourself as the dm um, to what rules that you want to incorporate or what rules you want to kind of ignore right what rules you kind of want to homebrew um whether you want to look at all those different ways to do initiative right do you, are there pros and cons there that seem uh helpful to the style of game that you want to play um it can it can be like the monsters right like uh the difficulty of the monsters but also are you going to have a little bit more supernatural high magic kind of monsters or are they going to be like low magic kind of just villains just other characters that are just bad people um or that you're just working against um there's so much stuff that goes into that but the more that you can detail your first original goal the more you can come up with what components need to go into that to make it happen and then um, assessment so assessment is really up to you it's kind of a judgment call but then it's it's kind of easy to go item by item right if you tried out four different things if you kind of jotted down uh, this is the way I, this is something I want to try with the fights this is something I want to try with the way that I'm running my NPCs um, and this is something I'm going to try to set up uh, I'm going to try to do my adventure hook a little bit different this time. Whatever all those things are, right? Once you kind of go through that game, stop and say, okay, did I get... I was really hoping that that X and Y were going to be good kind of role-playing elements or things to kind of bring that out. Yeah, I definitely got those. Um, I was hoping that, you know, the, the third and fourth things that I was doing were going to help um, make my combat encounters run a little bit smoother or just be a little bit more exciting and the one I think it made it a little more exciting but I, I still want to try to find a way to kind of quicken it up a little bit so are you gonna are you gonna have an initiative tracking kind of thing or, um, or or offloading that to another player to kind of help you right you can help narrow those things down um, the more that you have a good clear goal to begin with and then really, once you've kind of gone through all three of those, the, the planning thing kind of almost does itself. Because once you kind of assess each one, you kind of know if you're going to keep it or throw it. Um, really, it's just a matter of thinking, did that work awesome? Am I going to keep it that way? Is it 
just absolute garbage for this type of thing that I'm trying to do. It's just not working in this environment or for this purpose in this game. I'm not going to do it. Or, oh, it seems it feels like it's close to getting it to work. Can I tweak it? What is, is something can I change just a little bit or, or run it just a little differently or to address maybe one part of it that wasn't quite what I wanted? Um, or try something that's just a little, a little variation on it. Um, you do those, the more that you do it, the better you get at it. The easier it is to kind of figure out the right rules for your game or the right way to play your game. There you go, guys. I hope that was helpful. I really like this kind of thing. I, I don't know why. I just enjoy that DM part of things, of figuring out a way to make something run smoothly. I think part of it is that I love math, so I love thinking about how to smooth, uh, how to make those mechanics run pretty smoothly. Um, so if you feel like you're stuck on something that's not working in your game, um, leave a comment in this video. And the more that you can, like I was saying with um, how to figure out like that first step, having a good goal, the more that you can kind of describe what you're trying to get out of it, what your goal is, um, and what the objective parts are that you're maybe kind of struggling with, probably the easier it is for me to help you. But so if you have something in your game that isn't quite going right, or you're kind of struggling with this process, give me your specific examples, and I'll try to work through them in the comments below. And if there are enough things that seem either popular or seem like some really good thoughts or really good ideas, um, maybe I'll do a follow-up video of some more examples like that. So there you go. Hope it was helpful. If you like the video, give us a like, let me know. I'll do more like this. And um, if you're the best way to support the channel too right now is just subscribe and we need obviously more subscribers. So if you do that, thank you very much. Um, if not, we still hope to see you in the next one.